welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, but actually something that didn't happen in her country, in her kingdom. But on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of December 1560, King Francis II of France and King Consort of Scotland died at the age of just 15. He was laid to rest at the Cathedral Basilica of Saint-Denis on the 23rd of December. So why am I talking about the death of a French king when this is supposed to be a channel on Tudor history, Tudor England? Well, because Francis was the husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, and because after the death of Mary I in 1558 and the accession of Elizabeth I, Francis's father, King Henry II of France, proclaimed Francis and Mary King and Queen of England and quartered the arms of England with those of his son and daughter-in-law, challenging Elizabeth I. And, of course, following Francis's death, Mary returned to Scotland, and it wasn't long before Mary and those who supported her claim were causing trouble for Elizabeth I and her government. Let me tell you a bit more about Francis II, or Francois, as he was called in France. Francis was born on the 19th of January 1544 and was the son of King Henry II of France and his wife Catherine de' Medici. In 1548, when Francis was just four years old, his father came to an agreement with Scotland on the betrothal between Francis and five-year-old Mary, Queen of Scots. It was agreed that Mary would travel to France to be brought up with Francis and his siblings at the French court, and she landed at Roscoff on the 13th of August, 1548. Just under 10 years later, on the 24th of April, 1558, 14-year-old Francis married 15-year-old Mary in a lavish ceremony at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Pierre de Bourdet, Seigneur de Brenton, wrote of how Francis was madly in love with Mary, who was more beauteous than a goddess from the skies and that they lived together in great love and pleasant concord. On the 30th of June, 1559, King Henry II was injured during a tournament. He was jousting against Gabriel Montgomery, captain of his Scots Guard, when a splinter from Montgomery's shattered lance pierced his eye and entered his brain. His physician, Ambroise Paré, did all he could to save the king. But Henry died on the 10th of July, 1559, passing the throne to Francis. Francis was crowned king on the 21st of September, 1559, at Reims Cathedral by Mary's uncle, Charles Cardinal of Lorraine and Archbishop of Reims. It was traditional for queen consorts to be crowned and anointed in a separate ceremony. So although Mary was present, she was just a spectator. Although Mary thought she was pregnant in the summer of 1560, she sadly wasn't, and the royal couple didn't have any children before Francis's death. Francis started suffering from dizziness and tinnitus in mid-November 1560, and on the 16th of November, he collapsed. He then began suffering severe pains in his ear, and by late November, he was experiencing seizures. In his last days, fluid was leaking from his ears, nose and mouth, and he became delirious. He died late in the evening of the 5th of December 1560 and was succeeded as King of France by his brother Charles, who became Charles IX, with his mother, Catherine de' Medici, acting as regent. The widowed Mary was not wanted or needed by the regent Catherine, and so planned her return to Scotland, having been absent from her kingdom for 13 years. She set sail from the port of Calais on the 14th of August, 1561, and as her galley left the harbour, a ship collided with another vessel and sank, drowning all of its crew. Mary worried that this was a bad omen. She broke down and burst into tears as the French coast disappeared from view, saying, Adieu, France, it's all over now. Adieu, France. I think I'll never see your shores again. She landed at Leith on the 19th of August. 
Mary went on to marry Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, in July 1565, but lost the throne of Scotland when she was forced to abdicate in July 1567, following Darnley's murder and her subsequent marriage to the Earl of Bothwell, a man implicated in Darnley's murder. Her son by Darnley, one-year-old James, became King James VI of Scotland. Mary, of course, was executed as a traitor in 1587 after being implicated in the Babington plot against Queen Elizabeth I. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a man who served under four Tudor monarchs and, even though he was a staunch Protestant, managed to avoid going into exile in Mary I's reign and survived her reign, dying a natural death in Queen Elizabeth I's reign. Quite an achievement. Do make sure you're subscribed. Just click that button there. And that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of December 1556, Anne de Vere was born. She was the daughter of William Cecil, 1st Baron Burley, and his second wife, Mildred Cook. Anne only lived until she was 31 years old, but in her short life, she managed to impress scholars, have five children, and have a rather eventful and unhappy marriage with Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford, who didn't treat her at all well and even refused to recognise their first daughter as his own at one point. If only she'd married poet Philip Sidney instead. Find out more about Anne in last year's video. You'll find the link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like if you've enjoyed this talk and feel free to leave a comment as well. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.